It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Back into the program, we got live in studio State Representative Dan Sullivan is with us. Dan, welcome back, sir. Thank you, Paul. Glad to be here. We had a really enjoyed the interview last week. And yeah. Went home and just got an email. I have an alert, a Google alert that pops up. Really? And this was after this was after, after we were on, on Friday. Wow. Yes, and it popped up and I think it's dated uh, February late February, just this week. The new GAO Government Accounting Office report came out. And this let me read you a few of these headlines on the reports. And I think you had the reports posted on your Facebook page. It says the GAO evaluations yielded limited results, underscoring the need for changes to federal policy and procedures. Another quote from them, the watchdog agency looked at demonstrations in Arizona, Arkansas, and Massachusetts and found sufficient limitations in each, from the lack of information on quality measures to failure to discuss uh, ra- rationales and contributions. I'm sorry, in conclusions. And finally, a review of Arkansas's evaluation of a demonstration using Arkansas Medicaid funds to purchase private insurance for a select group of Medicaid beneficiaries also came up short, failing to address the hypothesis that doing so would improve community coverage. Wow. So in light of what we talked about and the, the numbers, and I also have a report, um, you know, this it was posted on the um, DHS that they were at, they claim 73,000 ineligible enrollees on in 2017 73,000 people Wow so that's a little different from the math we did on Friday Yeah but we'll take the lower <laughs> <laughs> just to concede that that's 73,000 times uh, 578 approximately Yeah yeah you know, per month that's the monthly cost Yeah that's that's millions I think about 40 million dollars a year of people who are not eligible. So even if we were to concede, you know, we may oppose Arkansas Works in general, but let's just take that $40 million population. And Paul, as we mentioned last week, those were people who were in jail, people who uh, we they have an address, but they don't live there, people who live in other states, people, all kinds of folks who really shouldn't be eligible. They're, they're on their Fraudulently. Fraudulently. It's fraud. We've paid money. The taxpayers have now paid money for these people to be on, and they shouldn't have ever been on. Yeah. They're almost illegal immigrants moving into our program from other sources that shouldn't be eligible. And I would think that... Uh, so that's an interesting comparison, but I like that comparison, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'll hear that well, later. Well, no, I think... <laughs> no, I'm just going to say, I think it's a good comparison if you think about... Uh, uh, just the the bad deal that that we're getting. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, the who's benefiting from this, which is a giant company. You know, yeah. you got Blue Cross Blue Shield. It is a two billion dollar windfall for them, while the people who are out there, you know, working every day and paying for the program are not getting a good deal. Yeah, and you know, Paul, my point with this, it's time to put our Kansans first. You hear our president say that over and over, put Americans first in our contracts. And all we have with Arkansas Works, which is Obamacare, all we have is a contract with basically three insurance companies in the state of Arkansas. And it's time that those contracts put our Kansans first. You know, if Arkansas Works patients or Obamacare patients uh, get their copay waived in certain areas, then the insurance companies ought to let regular Arkansans waive their copay. In Arkansas Works, if you have a, um, you know, if you have a, a premium to pay, but if you can't pay it in Arkansas Works, it gets waived. Well, then the same ought to be true for Arkansans. If you're having a hard time and you can't make your premium, then the insurance companies ought to waive your premium. But it's time to put Arkansans first. You're hearing the same thing from the pharmacies. You know what their cry is? Level playing field. Yep. That's all they ask for. And that's all I'm asking for is a level playing field for all Arkansans so that these insurance companies and the state treats everybody the same. You know, if you went into your local car dealer and you said, I'd like to have my car. And they said, great, here, this is the one I want. I'm going to drive it off the lot and I'll send the paperwork for my loan in later. Mm -hmm. How many of those car dealers would let you do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you tried to buy a home (laughs) and you said, I I love this home, I'll take it. By the way, I'll send the paperwork in later, but I'm going to start living here. 
and the, your, I'm sure your realtor would go, sure, I'll get the paperwork. I may come back in two or three months and you have to leave, but I'm going to let you live there now. You know, that, that's what's going on with the Arkansas Works with these people who are enrolling fraudulently. So we, ta we talked about on Friday, okay, so they removed these people and they're celebrating it. But if you actually look at how long they were on the program, they were on it fraudulently. They cost the state a lot of money. And we have done nothing to shut the door so where, to where they can't come back in. Exactly. And that's what the GAO report says that the data is limited, and if people want to go look that up, it's really Arkansas is really pointed at uh, specifically in this, that the data is limited, the data is inaccurate, uh, and our ability to capture those people is, and our DHS, you know, we'll give them very, a lot of credit, great job in getting in there. The previous administration created this. Uh, now this administration has gone in and cleaned those roles up. So one has to determine what error rate are you comfortable with in your business? I know you've got a lot of business people out there that are all kinds of small businesses. I wonder what error rate they're comfortable with for people walking out of the door with their product for a promise to pay later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the error rate would be zero. Try going into your local physician and asking your physician if your local doctor will see you, and you'll give them your insurance card when you leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. What happened? So, uh, yeah, if 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 we if oh joe sorry about that uh if we were to essentially go get insurance in another way other than arkansas works they're going to scrutinize us before we actually have coverage right that's not what's happening with or if if they paid for something that when we, we didn't qualify we'd have to repay that benefit yes right and so th that's a huge issue here is the seventy thousand people that we paid for that we're on there illegally. The, the, we're not, Blue Cross Blue Shield's not giving any money back to the state of Arkansas. On well, that. maybe they could voluntarily do that. Maybe we would go. To, we could go to them and say, "Look, guys, these were on fraudulently. Many of them probably had no claims. I mean, they had the wrong address. They're from other states. Uh, a lot of different things there. Many of them probably had no claims. Maybe we can just get them." the insurance companies to voluntarily rebate to the citizens of Arkansas. Treat us fairly, rebate that money. That's our highway money, Paul. Yeah, yeah. And you're talking $40 million a year since 2013. However you calculate that, and if you average it, you know, even give them a lower average of $30, yeah. $30 million a year. Mm -hmm. You're talking $150, $200 million a year for people who were on this program illegally and or unethically. Yeah. We paid that money to, to the insurance companies. The insurance companies accepted that money and our Kansans don't have that same yeah. opportunity. Yeah. It's just time to treat our Kansans, treat the people of Arkansas, make them the priority in all of our contracts. And I think people who, again, if you set this population aside, this is not the population of people who qualify. This is the population right. of people who don't qualify, don't qualify, but got on anyway. Still got paid. And it not only got on, but we paid for them. Mm -hmm. And let's have both parties agree, Republicans and Democrats agree, that's not a good thing. And let's decide what error rate are we comfortable with. You know, I, I hope everybody running for office and the voters will ask their legislators and they'll ask both candidates, what error rate for Arkansas works are you comfortable with? Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with $5 million a year, $10 million a year, $20 million a year? Mm -hmm. what's, what's a good number for them? And then go ask their local business. What error rate is your local business comfortable at? People walking out the door with their product. Yeah. I think in business it'd be zero. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah, the, it would be zero. Yeah. You know, so. uh, I hope people will go look at, at that report because it really says that Arkansas's ability to capture this information uh, is really difficult. And I think if you look back, and I know our administration's going to say that they've done a really good job at reducing that number. And I would agree they've reduced it quite a bit. However, I think in September we had another repayment we had to make of $3 million. Um, yeah, it was like a liability. Yeah, three million. Liability. Yeah, we yeah. failed to do the due diligence and how we used the state's money. So I think our history at the government level of these big government programs uh, managing tens of thousands of people, 
that there uh, some people are comfortable with paying five to ten to forty million dollars a year for that overage, and it's just not the way we need to be treating the people of Arkansas. No, I I agree because it's the it's the people of Arkansas that that suffer here, especially if you're talking about people who don't even live here that are getting the coverage. I mean, you're exactly right, and and I, it really does sound a lot like President Trump. You know, I mean, I I'm telling you, I. I believed him when he said uh, in his State of the Union address that everything he does is is trying to make sure it's in the best interest of all Americans, um, you know, and and the people, not just you know the special interest things like that. And I really, I really believe that. I thought that was one of the most sin- sincere parts of his State of the Union address that he really does think about. I I hope. I mean, I hope I'm not just being duped, but I mean, I guess join the club of being duped by politicians if he's not sincere. But I really felt like he was sincere. And that seems to be what you're saying here is that the uh, people of Arkansas are paying for this program, and yet there is a failure rate of just wasting money. And and you're talking about a lot of money a month, really. I mean, yeah. if you talk about, you know, these people are on the program for a year, and they're and you know, seventy thousand of them on the program for a year. That's a lot of money. It is, and they're illegally on the program. And you know, it's time to kind of build a wall between. Uh, there the, you go. Yeah, it's and the Blue Cross Blue Shield are sanctuary cities because that honestly, essentially, they, yeah, yeah. yeah we got people coming on the program illegally and are staying on there. They're getting paid, and it actually is a sanctuary place for people who are on it illegally. And if you look at that comparison, I think that's a valid one. It's a, it's a great comparison, yeah. actually. Let me go just a little bit different direction, Paul, yeah. just to, to inform your listeners, because this is not um, isolated. You know, behavioral health is a huge concern right now all around the state uh, and all the states. And Arkansas is changing to a managed care model for behavioral health. Uh, for quite a period of time, Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, there was a, a group, a select group of, of people, Blue Cross, UAMS, St. Bernard's here in Jonesboro, Washington General up in northwest Arkansas, and uh, our state agency, DHS, was meeting privately. And they had a number of private meetings um, talking about this managed care model. Um, where they eventually rolled it out, and um, other people joined in, other providers joined in, uh, to screen people into that program, we hired a company for $20 million. Even though we have local physicians who know the patient well, who are independent, they see them, DHS screens them already. Now we hire a third party at wow. $20 million to screen these people into the program. Screening sounds familiar, doesn't yeah. it, and our ability to screen them. That program is due to launch July 1, and right now they are 10,000 people behind. Wow. 10,000. screening them. They're asking your local school district to help screen them. They're asking providers to help screen them. And guess what the, the company that was hired is saying? We can't find them. <sighs> So, so what do we pay the $20 million for if they're not doing their job? Well, actually, they only get paid, and it's another insurance company, Optum. Well, well, okay, l- l- before you answer that, managed care, pharmacy benefit managers. Sounds like we're, we're talking about kind of the same model here. Uh, or potentially. Am I wrong on that? I mean, it seems like pharmacy benefit managers are really hurting local pharmacists because they get the sweet deal with Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, CVS Caremark, and now we're going to go into managed care for other entities. Yeah. It seems kind of a similar thread there. It's a there. funnel. Yeah. You know, manage, manage, when you have managed care, you're creating a funnel, and the person mm-hmm. at the funnel is the key to how – and that, that's the way you manage money. I mean, it's not a bad – in uh, essence and in principle, managing that care is important. And I voted for the managed care model. I support that because we have to manage the Medicaid dollar. And having tight scrutiny over it is very, very important. Okay, so so if you so, manage it, what's the important factor? Who gets to do that? Ah, uh, okay. Who is the manager? Right. Well, in the pharmacy model, it's the uh, PBM. In the managed care behavioral health model, it's going to be this company, Optum, who screens and tells patients what level of care they're going to get. Even though, again, you have independent 
physicians, uh, DHS screening them. You set up a separate agency, at, again, $20 million to do it again. And you're saying it's redundant. And it redundant. And the company, Optum, said there's something in it for us. We don't get paid if we don't do the assessment. So we're going to run out there and we'll do them all. Don't, you don't have to worry. We'll take care of it. Mm. Well, now they're saying we can't find the, the kids. We can't find the people that, to screen. Well, the people are there. It just costs money to find them. Wow. <laughs> you, know, you have to go f hunt them and find them. They're in the school. They're, mm -hmm. in, they're being seen now. So if it costs money to find them, uh, now they're saying we can't. We need help. It's just another instance where big government programs uh, tend to fail. You know, the behavioral health model screening was working pretty well. Uh, there were some excesses, and I met with DHS to help them uh, identify how to track those excesses down and those overpayments down. I work with DHS to do that. But again, if we just get back to the same issue that big government, uh, these big programs of managing the money, you have to look and see who the managers are. That's where the money is going. Yeah, well, no doubt. I just feel like we just start adding more and more layers. I mean, everywhere you look, more and more layers. And, uh, you know, I think we're getting negative results for the people. I appreciate your, your sentiments and where you're going with this because I think it's really good. And uh, any chance uh, any chance you get in a bill, your bill hurt to, to end or cap Medicaid expansion? Um, we're going to look. We'll wait. We're, we should have a vote on the DHS budget uh, maybe this week or next week. Okay. And depending on how that vote goes, we'll determine how hard we push to get that cap on. Okay. Right now, I don't know if they have the votes to pass the, the DHS budget. Really? And if they if they do pass it, then we'll work a little bit harder to uh, work hard <laughs> to get that cap out there. Again, it's it's important that the contracts that we negotiate as a government, it's important we put our Kansans first. It's their money. That's where all the money starts. It's important that we do that first. Every small business that's out there uh, listening, you need to consider. Uh, and encourage all your legislators to put our Kansans first in all these contracts. Yeah, and right now our money is just being thrown out the door because we got so many, you know, people who are on the program illegally. Yeah, I don't know if it's out the door or if it's thrown to those managed people. Yeah, it's thrown to, yeah. yeah. Blue Cross Blue Shield is our insurance manager for the state of Arkansas, folks. All right, Dan Sullivan, I appreciate you coming on, sir. Thank you, Paul. Glad to be here. Folks, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Back in just a moment.